Did you know that 57% of software engineers quit their jobs to move to a different company? That means that out of all the people you work with, more than half of them will leave you. Now, you might be wondering, why? Because many senior developers feel stuck in bureaucratic cycles, being undervalued and underpaid. But here's the secret. Technical skills alone won't get you to the top. It's what you're not focusing on that makes all the difference. Over the past decade, I've navigated this myself, from junior developer to leading multi-million dollar projects at Fortune 500 companies, to now running my seven-figure B2B consulting firm. And along the way, I uncovered career-changing strategies that most senior software engineers overlook. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to avoid becoming just another statistic by revealing three overlooked strategies to break out of career stagnation and set yourself up for long-term success. So I want you to think about this. In a room of 10 developers, how many do you think hate the product that they're building? Now consider how many senior developers routinely work overtime to meet unrealistic deadlines, often on products that have zero meaningful impact on society. And if you yourself have been burned out by this, you're not alone. In fact, eight out of 10 developers experience the same exact burnout, myself included. So the stagnation you feel isn't because you lack skill. It's because the product that you're building doesn't inspire you. And let's face it, you don't always have the power to change corporate priorities. But for a senior developer, their impact, their growth, and their financial reward all drive their passion. So if your current environment isn't providing any of those three, you'll stay stuck no matter how talented you are. So how do you actually break free from this cycle? Well, you need to start building your own product. It's the single most reliable way to grow as both an engineer and a leader, make a real impact on society, and earn more doing so in the long run. But that's just the first step. For us to understand the second step, I want you to picture a mountain. And at the base of the mountain, you can take any number of paths, but halfway up, the terrain shifts and your old strategies stop working. So what do you do? You ask the hikers coming down how they reached the top. And similarly, to elevate your career, you must leverage your network to discover new opportunities. I was talking to a friend of mine and we were discussing an interesting idea. The dream family vacation, the dream house, the dream cars, the dream life that you want is only a few conversations away. And this idea is known as the six degrees of separation, which essentially suggests that anyone is only six, if not fewer, social connections away from you. But this doesn't only apply to people, but also opportunities and ideas. So let me show you how this worked for me and how it can potentially work for you. Over dinner, this same friend of mine mentioned how a startup in Japan is leveraging AI for aquaculture. And that brief conversation opened an entirely new door for me, an investment opportunity that I wouldn't have been able to find out on my own. And if I did, I don't know how long it would have potentially take me. And you're capable of having the same exact experience. So take a look at the people around you. Don't discount anybody that you know. Approach conversations with genuine curiosity and you will be given the same opportunity that I was. You are only one chat away from potentially changing your life because all it takes is one yes to completely change the direction of your life. You see, most founders of Tech Unicorns actually found their co-founders within their own network. Take, for example, Stuart Butterfield, the founder of Slack. Stuart desperately needed a technical genius to, to build out the infrastructure for Slack. Knowing the power that Stuart possessed, he simply reached out to people he already knew and stumbled upon Cal Henderson, an ex-coworker at a previous company. Stuart essentially monetized off of his network to build the $27 billion empire. So the next time that you decide not to engage with other people, remember that you potentially are one conversation away from creating an empire just like Stuart Butterfield did. And for our third and final step, there's an old parable that we have to understand about a businessman and a fisherman. So there's a fisherman that fishes for eight hours a day and then feeds his family with the fish that he has caught. And he spends the rest of the day with his kids. A businessman passes by and tells a fisherman, if you had a bigger boat, you can catch 10 times the amount of fish that you just caught. The fisherman thinks for a little bit and replies, no, thank you. I'm happy with what I have. The businessman's final remarks to the fisherman before leaving were, maybe right now you are happy with what you have, 
But what will happen if, say, your fishing rod snaps, or your fishing net breaks, or if somebody fishes up the river every single day? If you had your own boats, you could catch fish without being here. And just like the fishermen, you only have so much control over income, and there is a ceiling that is reaching near. Yes, your salary could increase, you could get a big bonus, but the real wealth that has the potential to change your life and that of your next generation comes from building your own equity. So the constant cycle of working on pointless products then becoming burnt out is simply exhausting for all software engineers. And for me specifically, the fire that I had for engineering was slowly dying in the corporate environment until I realized why everybody was quitting. It wasn't until I started my own product and my own company that I was excited to actually wake up every single day and work for most of the day. So if you're a senior software engineer, you probably already knew the three reasons why you're stuck in the position that you're stuck in. So I guess the real question is, what's stopping you from breaking through the plateau? Is it that you fear the additional work required to progress? Is it that you're afraid of maybe falling short of the expectations of those around you? Or is it that you have a feeling that you're not doing what you want to be? Or maybe you can't afford to take the risk because you have family and kids. But whatever the case, I can tell you that it's possible. And if you want to learn more about how to exactly leverage your coding abilities and build a seven-figure business, then you need to watch this video next where I break down every single step that I took such that you can just copy me. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one.